Privyet Drusia, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to weather the lower hull of this Soviet surface-to-air missile system, Krug. In contrast to the upper hull, we're going to experiment and use very techniques to showcase and complete this model. Yes, experiment. Or in other words, I don't really know where this is going to go. In order to create depth and realism in the lower hull portions, which consists of the portion underneath the fenders, the running gear, the road wheels, drive sprocket and idlers, the emphasis will be on nature effects, mud, dust and some oil for good measure. During the construction stage, I thinned the rubber portion of the mud guards by sanding them down paper thin. So by simply using some tweezers, I'm able to distort them and the rubber to depict wear and tear. We now complete the final painting of base colours, so let's carefully hand paint this rubber colour to the mud flaps and also let's block in the rubber portions of the return rollers. Now, you may or may not be surprised to learn that the metal running gear of tanks and airfees is not always bright, shiny metal in appearance. What is interesting about our particular reference is that the drive sprocket exhibits corrosion on the outer face of the teeth of the sprocket. So let's use some acrylic paints to replicate this effect. We start by applying a thin coat of this dark brown color just on the portion that is evidently rusty. Let's also repeat the process on the contact face of the idler. Once that has dried, we apply a contrasting thin layer of this medium rust tone. If you look closely, you see that I'm applying this in a manner similar to stippling. We don't have to be entirely accurate with the application. In fact, it's better to randomize the appearance of this tone. To make the glaze, we simply use one drop of paint to three or four drops of water. The mixture now is extremely thin and very dilute. We again carefully apply the mixture using our brush, this time applying it on the areas that exhibit the most corrosion, in particular the teeth of the drive sprocket. Once everything is dried, we can now add the final effect, which is going to break up the appearance of this rust. Let's get out our old favorite Vallejo Camouflage Black Brown. And we're going to apply this using the sponge technique. We very sparingly apply black brown chips on top of the previous rust tones. This final step adds realism to the final appearance of this running gear. The next step is to use this circular template to mask off the rusty portion of the dry sprocket and now using the airbrush we can block in the colour semi-gloss black. Okay, the next stage is so-called pre-dusting. Let's use the Tamiya color Flat Earth. This will be the base dust for the upcoming steps. And we apply this using the airbrush on the outer face of all the road wheels and a very light dusting is applied in the centre section. We also apply a light dusting to the idle and drive sprocket.
Let's also add some of this dust underneath the hull and to the underneath of the vehicle. By using this acrylic paint, we add some texture for the upcoming steps. We also very lightly spray some of the hull surfaces where dust is likely to accumulate on the upper hull. Okay. Now we're going to start using our acrylic pigment washes and we're going to apply them entirely using sponges. We shall add three tones as layers for a realistic random final appearance. Let's start with the darkest dust tone first. I dab the first dust tone as small dots of the mixture on the road wheel and then I use the clean area of the sponge for blending the dust effects. This is extremely quick as the acrylic mixture drives very fast. We also use the same stippling technique on the sides of the hull. You can see where it dries that we're going to have some very distinct unblended areas of this wash. Yes, we can blend using thin as a medium, however I wanted to experiment with creating distinct unblended portions this time. Now we repeat the process using the darker acrylic wash liquid, which is burnt umber. However, this mixture is only applied to the hull and underneath the vehicle and not on the wheels. This darker tone creates random tones and contributes to a realistic finished appearance. We also very sparingly apply very light amounts of this dark tone on the upper hull surfaces. Do not confuse this effect with chipping. We're instead laying down some contrast and variation in a very subtle way on the upper surfaces of the hull. Now let's apply the final tone of road dust. This is the lightest of the colors of the liquid pigment and will serve to blend the two previous applications. Repeat the process as before, concentrating on the areas underneath the fenders And once again, a very, very light application on the upper surfaces of the hull. We have not attempted to blend any of these acrylic effects whatsoever. However, when it dries, we can see now very distinct areas of the liquid pigment. Let's be honest, it does not look great by any means. So now we must further add effects, create a homogeneous look. For the next series of effects, we're actually going to use oil paints on top of these acrylics. Yes, it can be done. We start by making a blend using three oil colors and add some enamel thinner to a wash type consistency.
First, the outer face of the road wheels are lightly stippled with this wash to create a light dust layer. Remember, this area previously did not receive any of the acrylic wash. Now we return to the hull and add the wash effect, particularly in areas which are not covered by the previous acrylic pigments. We also add neat oil paint on the very upper portion of the hull underneath the mud guards. We combine the distinct tones of earth and dust and blend them together using a stippling motion and we can wipe away the excess wash using a paper towel. Now we repeat the entire process underneath the vehicle in exactly the same manner. This is the very first time I've tried such an experiment and I was very interested with the results. It was interesting to see how the oil effects worked in conjunction with the previous acrylic pigments. We shall be doing something similar in the future as this was entirely new for me. With the oils, we add light speckling effects on the edges of the fenders and mud guards and also at the rear and front plates of the vehicle. Okay, now let's add some speckled mud effects. For convenience and speed, we shall use these out of the bottle products from Ammo of Mig, which are designed for this specific purpose. We start as usual using the darker tone. The application is very straightforward. We simply dip a brush into the mixture and using the speckling technique, build up the mud splatter in the specific areas where it is required, namely the lower hull and the front and rear plates. The advantage of this product is the very small and realistically sized mud splatter that it creates. When the mixture dries, we're left with small speckles plus actual textured mud appearance. We then repeat the entire process using the lighter of the mud splash tones. Now let's add some contrast and shadow to the very darkest portion under the fenders. The quickest and easiest way to do this is by using an airbrush. In this example, I experimented using the Ammo of MIG shader color, Starship Filth, which very quickly re-established the contrast in this area. It is very important not to overdo the shading or we shall lose the visual appearance of all the previous steps. Now, also in order to speed up the process again, we're gonna use another out of the bottle product. In this case, the enamel streaking brusher, color Starship Grime. This is a gray brown shade and it's applied directly to the lower hull in small quantities and streaks. Then we use a brush and we start to pull the mixture downwards to start creating the subtle streaks.
In areas where the mixture is too concentrated, we blend using a brush damp with some enamel thinners. Once again, we must be subtle with this effect in order not to wipe out the previous steps. We also apply small quantities of the normal wash on both the front and rear plates in order to affect some stains and variation in the tones of these areas. Fan brush comes in very useful for quickly blending these effects. Let's quickly add one further oil pin wash using a dilute, very dark brown mixture. It's applied as a pin wash in specific areas. All of the road wheels are treated with this wash in a detailed manner. We also add this wash to some components on the lower hull and once again we can speckle the oil mixture on the lower hull area to create oil type stains. I also speckled some of the wash on areas of the hull near the engine bay for greater variety. At long last, we can start assembling all the running gear. The road wheels are fitted onto the mounts. And we secure them with super glue. Once this is all set, we can now attach the tracks. Now let's have a look at some details for some further effects. These access steps were chipped using a light gray color. And then they were very subtly dry brushed using Mr. Metal Color Dark Iron. And the spare track links were treated in quite a similar manner. We can now attach these final components to the vehicle as the remaining weather steps require the model to be nearly fully assembled. 
We're going to add some paint wear using a selection of light colors. However, the application will be probably different from what you can see elsewhere in other models. We use the sponge technique to add very, very fine, in fact, nearly microscopic paint wear chips to the highly trafficked portions of the vehicle. We do not add any bare steel chips as they simply are not evident on operational vehicles in most cases. The application has to be very light in order to create these very realistically sized depictions of paint wear. In fact, we need to really see them at a macro level. Let's now assemble more of the model. The kit is supplied with a plastic ditching log. However, for a much more authentic appearance, let's use some real wood. Unfortunately, it has a square profile. However, I previously treated these wood beams using a weathering solution. And it's a simple matter of adding some scratches and nicks using a scalpel to complete this small detail. With the tracks and running gear set in the final position, we can add the very final dust effects. For this, we're going to use good old Tamiya Deck Tan, highly diluted and applied via the airbrush. Using some simple paper masks, we spray the dust on the very lowest portion of the road wheels and track. This recreates dust that settles on the vehicle when it comes to a stop. We freehand in the final dust at the rear portion of the vehicle using the airbrush. Now it's time to add some rust, but not as you've seen before, as real operational vehicles are simply not rusty. We shall use some of this old MIG Productions light rust enamel effects. I must have had this for over 10 years. This is applied very, very sparingly on the very small components that may become surface corroded, such as latches and catches that are infrequently used. We do not apply rust generally on the vehicle. Let's add some individual touches. I previously made all these 135th scale soda pop cans, complete with decals. Over the years, I've added quite a few of these cans to my many models. In all seriousness, it will help convey the story of this vehicle in that it's quite possibly not being kept in pristine condition. Now let's finally assemble this model and have a look at the finished result. This is the bear and I am out of here. So until the next time,